Hold on on tight tight for the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the the alternative alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, here we are, back for another day on the Investigative Journal on this Tuesday, January 16th, 2018, day on our calendar, and boy, what a show I have for you today. I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday on the crafty and duplicitous Jesuits and how they are the master deceivers with the goal, really, of uh, creating a Vatican-led New World Order, and one way they have to do it is get total control of America. Basically change it. Change it to a system that will fit into their globalization, their globalization of the world. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss today. You don't get this story anywhere else, really. Maybe a few places on the web. But it's a story that needs to be told, and it should be put on the table with other things you've heard about history and why uh, things are going on in the country as we speak today, but it's never talked about. It's hidden. And I'm going to present to you, as I, I'm going to pick up where I left off, as if I was in a court of law giving you a final summary and summarizing it as, in quotes, Jesuit love, and realize that everything I've said so far can be backed up by probable cause facts that it is true. And it would be up to you to decide whether to believe it or not believe it. And it's amazing to me that all of these globalists out there in this country, there are millions and millions of people who want globalization, who want to tear down borders of countries. And my question is, why don't you give some love to your mentors, the Jesuits? And why don't you see what they've done to get there and then make a decision on whether you still want to be on their side? And that's why I'm doing it. And the general statement started yesterday with many, many different things. I went through the achievements, as I did yesterday, of the Jesuit order. And you'd be surprised at some of them. Making a, They made lending of money an interest, a noble occupation. They place Jews in positions where fault of blame can be placed in the future. They exterminate heretic leaders and key components, opponents. They arranged for puppet leaders such as Hitler, Mao, Stalin, and others. Arranged for the slaughter of indigenous infidels. Now, you globalists out there, you know, you're involved. This, these are your boys, man. These are the leaders. These are your mentors. Uh, They slay believers in Christianity for the greater good of greater glory of the Vatican Empire. The Jesuit-controlled actors like Bush, Gore, Clinton, and that's two Bushes, right? Clinton, Obama, Trump, are all serving the order. And as I said yesterday, they all work on the same team. We've talked about how The Jesuits used the Jews as whipping dogs, basically setting them up for all the blame of what's going on in the world. And let's begin today by looking at how the Jesuits have been involved in most of all of the wars for the last four or five hundred years. We're going to be specific and work with World War I, Korea, Vietnam, Bosnia, the Gulf War, Iraq, the Spanish Civil War, the Mexican Civil War, the Second French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, and several others. And I would have mentioned this, that over the years, we've presented information on most of this to back up what we're saying. For example, World War I, they were involved in and created, and they split heretic Protestant Ireland from the rest of Britain. They lead to the further concentration of ownership of the United States and Britain, begin the Inquisition of Europe all over again. Now, in World War II, they finalized the acquisition of Japan. We've discussed that and many reasons why they wanted to get even with what the Japanese did to them. The extermination of the 
<laughs> heretic gypsy and Jew populations of Europe. They consolidated the takeover of the United States with post-war taxation, the formation of the CIA. We've discussed how Pope Pius XII was instrumental in doing that. Established Mao for the inquisitions of China and consolidation of power through the triads and secret service. The Chinese are, are now owned by the Jesuit order. Did you realize this? The religious faith is dead to be reborn as the Jesuit Catholic system in the future. They strengthen the grip of Stalin, the Jesuit puppet, and subjugation and control of Soviet territories. The Russian people, whether they know it or not, are now owned by the Jesuit order, the Jesuit brotherhood, and you can bet Putin works with the Vatican, just like our presidents. Just he trumpets a different cause, right? It's that old Hegelian dialectic at work. Now what about uh, Korea? Oh, we're hearing a lot about North and South Korea. They began the Jesuit Order's more, the more formal use of the United States as an instrument of inquisition. They split Korea in two, and look at what's happening today. Do you realize that Kim Jong-un is just like one of their other puppets in the past, all the ones we've mentioned? Yes. And you see how they use him to create chaos throughout the world as it's going on today. Just again, there was a false flag event in, in Japan we heard about yesterday where they mistakenly hit the nuclear button and people were running for shelter and they said it was an error and that came just a couple days after it happened in Hawaii. So they're getting people ready for what's the inevitable is going to happen. Their big World War III. But let's go to Vietnam. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> We've spent many, many shows on that, proving our point. They eliminated indigenous and heretical Buddhist populations via the United States. The purge of the Cambodian indigenous heretics followed, with the U.S. population conditioned to want nothing more to do with Southeast Asia. How about Bosnia? They killed Protestant and Muslim populations by the millions. They increased UN presence and authority in the world community. The Gulf War, still <laughs> going on today, folks. Begin the formal cultivation of the terrorist in the anti-American image. And in Iraq, they kill the heretic populations, cultivate anti-American attitudes around the world, and cultivate an army of Muslims for an invasion of the U.S., and thereby slaughtering a population that might otherwise resist. Do you think the people in the Middle East would ever want to, you know, say things like death to America if they weren't instigated and paid by the Brotherhood using Western money? And I want to thank a website that I found 12 years ago. I don't even know if it's there anymore, called Jesuit Love. And uh, I want to thank them for much of this, the information that synthesized everything we've discussed in the last 15 years. And I'm using much of what, some of what they've put down, and I put this in my record so that I'd always have a, a copy of this. So we talk about the Iraq War. Then well, how about going back to 1936? Spanish Civil War, led by Cardinal Pedro Segura led the Islamic army in slaughtering unfaithful Roman Catholic men, women, and children without any mercy. How about the Mexican Civil War? 1914 to 1945 killed over one million Mexican heretics. The Second French Revolution, we can go back to the 1840s. Uh, the Russian Revolution, it's amazing during that period of time, the, we look at 1917 to 1922, the Mexican War of Reform, we see the Russian Revolution in 1917 to 1922, followed by Inquisition, the purges of these heretics. Then we have in 1858 to 1861, the Mexican War of Reform. The American Civil War, 1861 to 1865. The German-Austrian War, 1866. The end of the Japanese uh, Shogun, uh, S-H-O-G-U-N-A-T-E, 1868. The Franco-Prussian War, 1870 to 1871. 1895 to 1906, the Dreyfus Affair. 
That's just a num that's just a smidgen of what they've done throughout the centuries. They're good at it. They're excellent at it. And that's why they're the kingpins today. That's why Georgetown University, the first Jesuit university, is right next to the White House. And we've talked about how uh, Father Edmund Walsh basically was a spy. He started the School of Foreign Service. He's got a page on Ike's website. And most of our diplomats are Jesuit trained. So all of these, isn't it interesting, all these revolutions during that period of time instigated just the way they grow terrorism today, worldwide. I remember when I was in Italy in the 80s. Oh, yes. They were practicing their big game back then that was regional terrorism there. And I found out about it the hard way by almost being killed by one of their bombs that went off in the newspaper I worked. I worked for the American newspaper, and I was very lucky in not being killed as the bomb went off. Ten seconds after I was in the hallway, a few seconds after I was in the hallway, that would have blown me to smithereens. And it was some, you know, it was an inside job. It had to be. I figured it out afterwards. And that's what started my trek in really understanding how they do this. And they do, they've done it for hundreds of years. If they get enough money and they get enough poverty, they can get people to do anything. And so they spread hatred between the East, you know, between the fighting. They want an enemy all the time. Now it's Muslims against Christians. And what, what is their goal? To wipe out as many as possible so they can come in as the heroes to protect you in a global world. So all you globalists out there, all you millennials and all you others who think that no borders is good. You know, these are the guys that are, are behind it. And you ought to praise their work, right? You ought to say, yeah, I'm behind them. All the way they've killed all these people over the years. That's really our leaders. We And your part, you know, if you don't look into it, you're guilty by association. And you call yourselves Americans. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, what a world we live in. But, you know, looking back at all these uh, revolutions, people have always asked me, what about the American Revolution? And we've pre presented show after show showing you with probable cause information that should be on the table. That's what we could find out. Can you imagine what we can find out, what's really hidden in those Vatican vaults? That they were involved right from the beginning, at creating this country so they could get Catholicism in here, and when it spreads and grows, just like Islam in a country, they take over, and your freedoms go out the window. We didn't even get into the discussion today of how they created Islam. I'll leave that for another day. But isn't it amazing that none of this history is ever told to anyone. That's because they've been treating, you know, they've been using Jesuit history, Jesuitism, Jesuitical teachings in all of our universities, whether they're public or private. And they've been doing this for hundreds of years. They did it in Europe. Most of our founding fathers were trained in Jesuit schools. And in fact, We've shown positive evidence that certain Jesuit priests should be our founding, be glorified as our founding fathers, right? But if they were, the cat would be out of the bag, wouldn't it? So all you globalists out there, all you people that think it's great to be a liberal and Democrat now, millions and millions, half the country, maybe even more, you're playing right into their hands. And basically, if you knew all this stuff, would you still feel the same way? So I'm trying to put out in the open who your mentors really are. So, you know, I mentioned earlier about my experience in Rome, how I witnessed regional terrorism, the same thing they were doing in Italy. They'd create a terror group, blame a bombing on them, like they did when Reagan was coming to Rome, when I was almost blown to smithereens. 
And they blamed it on some right or left wing group that they created with American money. And they did it over and over again in Italy during that period of time, testing out how they could do it now worldwide. So how about terrorism and the Jesuits? Oh, these false flag fabrications seem to happen every day, don't they? You know, like the Cold War, terrorism is designed to bring power together, to consolidate it while slaughtering people who don't believe or in what the, the global system would bring or heretics while training a new crop of butchers for the next round of Jesuit inquisitions. The known abuses in Iraq are only the tip of the iceberg. Many abuses of women and children are underway as we speak today in all parts of the world. Soldiers are being psychologically brutalized by being told to randomly kill women and children civilians. Yeah. The goal, of course, is to further and further infuriate Muslim youth against America and further and further promote a negative image of the United States around the world. And the real issue is people in our schools are being taught the same thing. This is a huge story that we've discussed here that never gets talked about. And I'm going to give you right now a name. His name is Fatula Gulen. Okay? And this man is proof positive that Trump... Clinton, and the Bushes, and Obama all work on the same team. Because if Trump was any different, talking this big game of clamping down on immigration and wiping out Muslim terrorists, he'd get rid of Fagula, Fatula Gulen, who lives like a king in the Pocono Mountains, brought here in the 90s by Clinton, to create Muslim schools using our taxpayer money and billing him as a moderate. And in fact, if you look at his history back in Turkey, and I we did this years ago on this show, and I remember him even back in the 80s when I was in Italy hearing about his organizations, and they weren't pretty. He's not a moderate. He's an extremist. Using the school systems of the Muslim school system, he's creating all of these Muslim schools, teaching jihad behind our backs, and if Trump was for real, he would get rid of Fatula Gulen, but he still sits in Poconos, and you don't hear a word about it from the media, do you? Because if you get deep into that story, you will find the truth out about what we're saying on this program and what needs to be told to the American people before it is way too late. Before it's too late. And I don't know if it's way too late now. And every day I think about, when will be this last show? I'm not talking about my demise, because we all uh, meet the same Grim Reaper one of these days. I'm talking about, when will it be over? When will they just, one day there's going to be no electricity? One day there's going to be no internet? When is that going to happen? And it will be for a period of time, so they can then get total control of this country. And they'll be prepared. It won't affect the elites. They're already set up in foreign lands to do their dirty work. So basically, I always think about that in the back of my mind, but look into Fatula Gulen. Gulen. We've done many shows. And he was brought, he's, you know, in fact, during the, when Trump first came into office, remember that coup in Turkey that we discussed and how that was a false, that was propagated by American propaganda? And basically, uh, the president in Turkey, then after he uh, narrowly uh, missed being killed, came back and said, uh, you know, give me Fatula Gulen in the United States. He's the radical Islamist that created this terror organization in my country. And the American people were sold a bill of goods that the president of Turkey was a bad guy. When in fact, it could be just the other way around. But they play such a dirty game, it's hard to figure anything out. But I look at just that one man, Gulen, and if Trump was for real and wanted to stop terrorism, terrorism growth in this country 
Fatula Gulen would have been arrested immediately in his universities that are taking millions and millions of taxpayer dollars yearly. We can't even educate our own kids, and they're giving money to Muslim terrorists to educate them in jihad, to destroy the United States. What do you think Obama was about those four, those eight years? To weaken every part of this country, to a point now that if there was a war, our military is in such bad shape, we'd be done and, you know, we're no match anymore for China and Russia together. And other, and then add uh, what we've done to Islam. I mean, where are these bleeding heart liberals today? are bringing all, I mean, that's why it's so phony when you listen to what's going on in the news. This Trump gate, you know, about his collusion with Russia. It's only a, only a cover, and they know it. Trump knows it, too. Because the real damage has already been done by the Clintons. Why aren't they being prosecuted? And Obama, who gave $150 billion to Iraq in money, you know, on pallets of money, or Iran, for that fake nuclear deal. And nobody says a word about it, you liberals. You know, and it's billed as, well, if we give them the money, they're not going to nuke us. What, what is he talking about? Terrorism is only, it's only feeding it more, feeding, feeding that terrorist uh, gorilla even more. And you know, this whole idea of racism now, where basically every word you hear, if Trump says something, he's a racist, is so hypocritical. You can see it. And it's a Jesuit plot. It's a Jesuit strategy. Always pit one group against another. So you liberals, you've got your ment on pointing out who your bosses really are. And do you really like their tactics? They're more treacherous than anything that right-wing America could ever present. And by the way, if you really look at their game, what's wrong with creating a strong country? What's wrong with building an economy that works? Well, what's wrong with it is it's not suited for a global world that they want to control. Just look across the border, what they've done to Mexico, what they've done to Latin America, what they've done to other countries. You know, if you look at what's happening in Europe right now, I got a couple little interesting tidbits about what happens when you allow open borders and immigration like this instead of, you know, solving problems. And, you know, people, if we could solve all the problems of the world with the money they spend on all of these covert operations using drug money creating poppy fields in, we've talked about it in Afghanistan, just like they did in Burma when they needed money for their Cold War, when there was a, we were always fighting communism all over the world. They needed to fund it. They needed money to keep that going, to keep that enemy alive. Feed the enemy should be the American motto. Give the, Amer give the enemy American money and don't ever tell the people Keep them on their toes. Keep them always in fear and we'll protect you. That's the Jesuit way. And I'm pointing this out for all of you people in the audience. All of you people who, who feel that America is the melting pot of the whole world still today. Bring them all in. Yeah. Close the borders. No borders. An open world. One world, that was, that's it. Everybody together singing the same song, right? And like I mentioned earlier, what they're doing with terrorism and the Jesuits here that we're talking about is a way to get you to dance to the same tune, a way to get to the world to the dance to the same tune. And we'll be back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, 
we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a Third Temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossTheBorder.org. The following program is legally dangerous and off limits by the supreme Jesuit command. But stand tall, people. Listen up, and you may just learn something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, I couldn't wait to get back because this show is all about putting things together for you, and especially for those who really believe in globalization, who think it's good. And on the surface, it sounds good, doesn't it? And everybody working together. But they ask me, why does everything get worse all the time? If you look at all these countries in America, I mean, why do things always seem to never get better? Right now, they're playing a game here showing Americans, well, we're back. We're back strong as can be. And it's keeping people occupied keeping people occupied at a time now when they're creating a strategy of tension again throughout the world to pit America and the West against their enemies in the uh, Muslim world. And it's going to be a beauty. And China will be involved, so will Russia, North Korea. It could be that, you know, spark that gets the fire really burning. And terrorism is now worldwide, correct? I talked about how in the 80s I learned about regional terrorism and how they were experimenting with it. You see, they always test things out. Just like they tested and created, the Jesuits created communism with the Paraguay experiments. Oh, they call them the Paraguay reductions. 
in the 1600s. Look into that. But the goal, of course, is to further and further infuriate uh, now this worldwide tension of the Muslim youth against America. Now, Al-Qaeda is nothing more than a CIA-run operation, and so is ISIS of this noble Jesuit brotherhood that all of you globalists should be bragging about, but I don't hear anything out of your mouths. Osama bin Laden was merely a lapdog of the great Jesuit order, doing as instructed. The involvement of the terrorist events, like 9-11, is only for a show, a cover story to motivate everybody, the sheep in America, in the United States and Britain, to hate anybody that uh, lives in the Middle East. Of course, the individuals who apply to join the ranks of groups like Al-Qaeda believe Yes, you see, just like you globalists believe in all these things they tell you, they believe they're working for a noble cause and that we are the real enemy. They believe this. But the only real enemy of the world is the heretic unfaithful to the holy work of the Jesuit-controlled black pope and his Vatican. The Muslim is much of a heretic and will just as much come to be owned and destroyed under their ideals, under the Jesuit ideals. They're just being used as a tool. They were created for this purpose. And so that's what we're seeing play out right before our very eyes today. But what about all of these secret service organizations? The spies of the world. You hear nothing, you hear so much about them. But the Brotherhood of the Jesus, or the Jesuit Society, is from the inception. And by design, if you look at how they were created to stamp out Martin Luther and Protestantism and the Bible, they're just a covert army of spies and assassins. That's what they were, tra that's how they were formed. And isn't it interesting? You know, I always look back to a picture. I see the presidents when they go to visit the Pope. They sit under the picture of Ignatius Loyola. That should tell you everything. But if you don't know anything about it, it means nothing, right? The Jesuits' marvelous success has come in no small part, you know, from the, it's the own, it's the way they're organized. The way that the Jesuit order is organized is used as a model for many, many <laughs> organizations around the world, right? The Jesuits have applied this need-to-know, above-top-secret design to the establishment of security services around the world. The good brothers in the Jesuit order have gained inside access either through the fabricated religious pretext that they use with the confessionals or through controlling influences within secret societies. They, uh, the victory has come in part from its high-level ownership of the CIA, which was created right after World War II, right in Rome. The FBI, MI5, MI6, Mossad, KGB, FSB, and many other national security organizations, all these organizations, are patterned for their success after the Jesuit order itself. One of the most notable examples was the Jesuit Nazi uh, SS, from whose ranks came many of the early CIA members with good skills in torture and mind manipulation. With the so, uh, you know, with solidifying of need to know privacy in the CIA under national security, and with the gradual removal of oversight authority and accountability by the Congress, CIA today, today stands untouchable and in the near full control of the U.S. in many different ways. Events such as the assassination of John F. Kennedy and 9-11 demonstrate the agency's facility at perpetrating and managing the backlashes as they occur. In conjunction with the control over the FBI and NSA and the information media, future events will continue to occur as Planned. The work of FEMA to prepare underground shelters for the privileged and concentration camps for the heretic is equally disturbing 
and going on as we speak. Now, some people ask me, Greg, how do how do they get these people in the CIA or with even Green Beret assassins to do their dirty work? Let me, let me give you an example. I interviewed a long time ago a Green Beret CIA assassin. And he told me the true story, and it was born out in a court case in a book he wrote, which was found to be true in a federal case that was brought against him by the Pentagon. And in that story, he told me, before he went over to Vietnam, that the company or the CIA came to him and said that there was a spy working at Bethesda Hospital, a doctor, that needed to be killed. He was working for the Soviets. And I asked, uh, I asked him, well, what did you do? And he said, well, you always have the ability to take a job or turn it down. And basically, I said, well, if you turn it down, aren't they worried you're going to talk? Well, he said, no, because if you talk, you're dead. And you know that. But he said he turned the job down because he did not want to spend two or three years away from his family in hiding. Because what they do is they wipe you off the books. You don't exist. And he was firmly in the belief that this man needed to be killed because he was a spy, when in fact he wasn't. He had information privy to, uh, against uh, the information they were spreading about the JFK assassination. This man had pictures from the autopsy room. He was killed by another Green Beret, uh, as uh, the gentleman that I interviewed uh, told me. And that's how they do it. Gung Ho America spread this idea here, just like they do to the kids in the Muslim world that hate America from, you know, and teach them to even believe that they're going to a special place with the virgins and in heaven if they strap on a bomb and blow themselves up as long as they take a hundred Jews with them. So the same hatred here exists, too, with even men who are gung-ho America, who believe, who believed that this man was an enemy when in fact he wasn't. It's the duplicity, it's the deception that they use at all levels. So you can see how easy it is to get these people to work for you. Especially when you're on a need-to-know basis, just as in the Jesuit order. They tell you to jump, and you jump. The Jesuit tells you to jump off, the Jesuit general tells you to jump off a building, you jump off a building. So, that's one of the big examples, the SS. And we've even got quotes from many of, you know, the top people in the Nazi party said, with this, or the Hitler even saying that he formed his organization based on the Jesuits in the Vatican. So the work of FEMA is going on, these underground camps. Isn't it interesting? You can go on the web and find a number of these stories. And, you know, I wonder about these globalists, these people, these millennials now, and all these people who want open borders, who would say, don't get rid of Fatullah Gul, and he's a good man. He's teaching moderate Muslims. We all must live together. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to feel, you know, when they're living in their little concentration camp. Because you're not going to be, what do you think they're going to, oh, I was a globalist, you're okay. No. They have also, these CIA and these secret services have managed properties to serve the Brotherhood. Such properties include drug trade, it's equally profitable drug war, sex slavery is now a more profitable enterprise than drugs, and with it, it's profits from selective law enforcement. All such activities serve to assist the Brotherhood in managing the training and dependency of law enforcement services and training from the national level. This facilitates putting distance between law enforcement personnel and the citizen. Just as the Jesuits are really not subject to the authority of the Vatican, neither are the secret services subject to the authority of the country in which they are positioned. With the CIA, for example, the above top secret or need to know and plausible deniability rationales put them, the CIA, above and independent of the President and the Congress. So, what about the puppets 
and the Jesuits, the people that really have worked for them. How do they fit in? And there's so many of them, I could never get to them all in this country. And in fact, in the world, it's a, you know, we'd have a list as long as my arm. But what about these puppets of the Jesuits? How do they function? What is their real function? What is the president of the United States' real function? You know, they've gained systematic control of the U.S. over the last 150 years. Teddy Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Truman, Nixon, Carter, Clinton, the Bushes, Obama, Trump have all been uh, the orders, useful lapdogs. You know, with the wealth of the Federal Reserve they've created, which is not federal, it's just a front name, it's a bunch of foreign banks that create phony money. Stalin was raised to power by the Federal Reserve with that money that they've created. The communist uh, uh, purge of the Russian Orthodox was very successful. Hitler was another such pawn who served the order well. Pol Pot, Mao, many, many others, including Kim Jong-un from North Korea today. The collective death tolls, let's, this is just a, let's just look at some of the death tolls of people who are considered heretics via communism or other Jesuit facilitators. And these are conservative numbers. USSR, maybe 20 to 35 million deaths. China, 65 million deaths. Vietnam, a couple million deaths. North Korea, 2 million. Cambodia, 2 million. Eastern Europe, another million or two. Afghanistan, a million five. Deaths in Africa, millions. One, two, three, five million. Latin America, 25 million. Mexico, another million deaths. This is just conservative numbers. Amazing. And you globalists out there, you must really think. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We're talking about the Vatican-led New World Order wanting globalism, and then we hear all the people in America that want globalism. But do you realize how many people have been killed for this? And maybe you'll be one of the next. I thought globalism was to bring about peace, serenity, bring about love, bring about people together. No, it's about population destruction. Because not only do they want you to dance on the dance floor, one dance floor of the whole world, not hundreds of spread out, they can't control the, the music, can they? Just like they want you on one dance floor. They don't want a crowded dance floor. They want it pared down a bit. Some people say by hundreds of millions. So that's what they have in store for you, you globalists. So watch out what you wish for, right? Watch out what you wish for. So let's go back to the Cold War before we get into 9-11. We've done many shows on both of these subjects. And the Cold War served the order, oh, in so many wonderful ways. At the end of the Second World War, China and Russia were only slightly more advanced than, than uh, they would have been in the 1800s, right? The Russia, the you know, Orthodox, the heretical Orthodox had been enduring the Brotherhood's Inquisitions under their, I, I call him Jesuit, Father Jesuit uh, Joseph Stalin. China was just beginning the cleansing and reforming of the Inquisition of the Buddhists, the Taoists, heretics, via lapdog Mao. Neither country was capable of opposing the United States. For the purges to go unopposed, the people in the United States needed to believe that it could not interfere in the internal politics of these countries without a global nuclear war resulting. With this pretext and the Brotherhood's control in the media, including the new media of television, and you've seen what's happened to that, the con total control of that, this was not difficult to do. Providing the nuclear technology to the Soviets was a key initial tactic and the appropriate time, the Chinese were provided the technology as well. This made them viable threats to the public and established heretical elements in the military, but in reality, both countries were well under Jesuit control via their secret services. The Cold War provided additional revenue through the military-industrial complex owned by the Brotherhood. It was a time of intense misdirection against the infidel Protestants. The Korean War and Vietnam War allowed the Americans to slaughter the Buddhists and indigenous populations under the guise of, quote, fighting communism, unquote. 
The American people were led to believe they were helping oppose communism, when in reality they were simply slaughtering infidels for the Jesuit order and its greatest satisfaction. With the establishment of the CIA by the lapdog Truman, gradual deepening of control over America was being finalized. The CIA were initially staffed from Nazi SS, mind and body inquisitors trained and cultivated during the Third Reich by the Jesuit order. Black is white, white is black is the motto of the High Brotherhood, the Jesuit Brotherhood. What the people are told is far from what is really happening. They've a uh, promotion of equality, you hear, animal rights, and the environment help to facilitate an expanded influence of the top-down government against individual states and the heretic population during this period as well. <laughs> Global warming, yes. Another idea that's uh, believed by many of you globalists. Boy, they got you thinking in terms of, wow, if they get you to do that, and get you to do any believe anything. Social protest against the Vietnam War helped to create the needed split between the population and the government, right? It was in this split that the Jesuit servant Nixon could initiate the end of the cold gold standard. Later with Carter, the clear independent authority of the CIA could be justified. Yes. So we have them to, you know, the Jesu you globalists, you have your mentor, the Jesuits, to be proud of for creating that Cold War, correct? Why don't we end today with a little bit of a discussion about 9-11, okay? A little bit. We'll come back tomorrow maybe with more. But we've talked so much on this story. And, you know, I spent a long time right after 9-11, a couple of years, just researching it to the point of coming away with the fact that Beyond a shadow of a doubt, this was an inside job created by the government. But as the years go by, people don't care about it anymore. There, that's one of the big achievements of your mentors, you globalists out there. The demolition of the towers was a carefully planned event. Some say care, you know, planned for over 30 to 40 years, used for multiple purposes. Some say they even built those buildings with this in mind. And what did it do? solidified the established, the fabricated terrorist phase, this worldwide terrorism, that's what it solidified. Just as the fabricated Cold War had been established previously with Korea and Berlin. And secondly, to further concentrate the central government in the United States via the Patriot Act, that was written by a Jesuit lawyer in, in Georgetown, a Vietnam Jesuit lawyer, I think his name was Vin Dim. That Patriot Act was written prior to 9-11, so about three or four hundred pages that was put in the law right after and none of the congressmen even bothered to read it. And then they created the Office of Homeland Security. Some, which that sounds like a Nazi term, doesn't it? Homeland. That's what the Nazis used to use, right? Via the Iraq aggressions turned the world towards brotherhood controlled United Nations and strongly cultivated an anti-American, anti-British view. To further dilute the number of U.S. troops in the continental United States by driving them offshore for events like Afghanistan and Iraq. And why are we in Afghanistan? It's the new Burma, where the poppy fields are still being protected by our soldiers. To cultivate and train the hair, because they use that as drug money to fund these terrorist groups. Because they can't, you know, go right through Congress and do it. To cultivate and train the heretic Muslim youth as a future military force to be used against the United States and to justify a FEMA construction of camps within the United States for the coming inquisition of this heretic nation. To see the United States as a bully, but yet a vulnerable one now, right? That's why Obama was there wrecking, you know, destroying everything in those eight years. A big spy he was. He wasn't even a citizen, for Christ's sake. Now, how about, let's see how much time we have. I think I'm running out of time here. Yeah, I got about three minutes. So I don't want to get into the central government, the controlling population, education, the media, and the Jesuit order. We'll save that for tomorrow. Big story. You know, they're not just satisfied with what we've talked about so far. They want it all. They want to control, folks, your mind, body, and soul. So that when they create this one dance floor, for all of the people remaining, not many, they're going to pare down the number of people on that dance floor. 
They'll be able to control you and you will love it because they will be billed as the protectors. We've come to your salvation because this world is a brutal place. They don't tell you they created it because they create the problem then they solve it. That's their strategy. Jesuits have been using it ever since they were formed for that very reason, to destroy Protestantism, to destroy people from reading the Bible, because that takes away the power of the Vatican, doesn't it? If people don't need to go to the Pope, do they? The people don't need to use the Vatican as an intermediary to get to heaven. The Bible teaches that you can find God through the Bible and through his word. Oh, that had to be stopped. And they didn't just stop with doing, you know, cutting people's heads off. They've done it through a system of education, miseducation, and they've done it through the system of all of this control that we've talked about in the last two days. And it's pretty scary that not many people know about it, isn't it? And I'm just trying to do this, especially for you globalists out there, you people that are pushing for open borders, for countries to just become all the same, right? They Look at what's happening to Europe as we speak. I have friends over there I talk to all the time. And there are places you can't even go in France anymore, or Norway, or Sweden, or in, even in Italy. There are no, zo no go zones where police won't even go in because it's now under Sharia law. They're trying to change the face of Western civilization. And as far as I'm concerned, they're doing a hell of a job. And that's why you globalists ought to recognize who your bosses really are and how they achieve this so-called kumbaya love world of one world and no borders and we have to treat everyone. We have to open up our arms to terrorists so they can kill us. Yeah. I wanted you to know really how they do it. And I would wish that you'd give them the credit they deserve, the Jesuit love that they deserve, right? But you don't. You're a humble bunch, aren't you? Very hum humble bunch of people. You know, if you knew the truth about what really globalization is, you wouldn't be that way. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.